Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that we are in Christ, and that's who we are, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I give you praise for the day and ask that you just bless and minister the people. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> um, the Holy Spirit, um, what I want to just start, Linda and I have been doing this thing about, um, we've been doing this study and uh, together, and uh, one of the things that God has uh, been talking to us about is our identity. And I think that the church as a whole, in areas of each one of our lives, we're at a, we have an identity crisis. There's areas in each person's life that they don't identify correctly, and, and we need to change that. Amen? Um, you know, the, what, the, what, the, what the father, he just shared this with me, and I'll just share this. He, he said, he told me, he says, the Holy Spirit draws people to the Father. And, and if you think about as you're being drawn to him, that's where life, abundance, health, healing, deliverance, authority, blessings, all that is coming from the throne room and flowing to you. Amen? And uh, if, you, if you read in Ephesians 5.1, I just want to, it says, Therefore be imitators of God, copy and follow his example, as well-beloved children imitate their father. And so the question that came through my head as I was preparing this message was, am I thinking God thoughts? Um, do I think like him? And that's something that every person needs to ask themselves a lot of times, are, am I thinking like him? Um, in Philippians uh, 2, verse 13, it says, For it is God who worketh in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Um, one of the things that when we as Christians, we look at ourselves and... Uh, we think about like our past, where we came from, whatever. And here we are today, you know, I'm 40 years later that I've been a Christian. Um, right at, I'm 1978 is when I got saved. 88, yeah, 40 years. This December, actually, praise God, I got a birthday coming up. Amen, it's actually getting pretty close. Yeah, I didn't even realize that, but that's good. But uh, um, therefore, be imitators of God copy and follow his example um let's go to romans and i want to just and i'm gonna sit here for a little while because this has just really just been i've been just sitting here for it's been pretty good romans 12 it says this therefore as through one man sin entered into the world and death through sin and so death passed unto all men for that all sinned for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin was not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam until Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the likeness of Adam's transgression, who is a figure of him that was to come. But not as the trespass, so also it is the free gift. For if by the trespass of the one, the many died, much more did the grace of God and the gift of by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound unto many. And not as through that one sin, so is the gift. For if the judgment came of one unto condemnation, but the free gift came by many trespasses unto justification. For if by the trespass of the one death reigned through all the one, much more shall they receive the abundance of the grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one, even Jesus Christ. So then, as through one trespass, the judgment came unto all men to condemnation, even so through one act of righteousness, the free gift came unto all men to justification of life. For as through the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, even so through the obedience of the one shall the many be made righteous. This is Romans 5, 12 through 19. Sorry. 
I knew where I was at. You guys didn't. That's all right. Romans 5. Um, the, thing that, the thing that just really just rose up inside of me was when, when God's talking about, nevertheless, death reign from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned. Um, you need to ask yourself questions, and you always should do that. I do this. Um, but the, one of the questions you need to ask yourself is, where is death reigning in your life? And I know as Christians you don't want to think like that, but you need to think like that. Because those areas where death is reigning are areas of defeat. They're areas that you're not seeing the flow of God. You're not seeing the life, the abundance, the health, the healing, the deliverance, the authority, the blessings of God flowing through you. Amen? And, and so as, you, as I sit here and I think about this, I think, what areas of my life is death reigning? You know, all of us, every one of us, have that old Adam, that old nature that we can identify with. Amen? I mean, I look at myself sometimes, and when I, I never do this, but I, once, once, I think I've done it last, it's probably been 20 years ago, where I blew it, and I got in the flesh, maybe 20, maybe 25. I'm kidding. You know, it happens. And, and, when I, I, and when I sit there and I look at that man, and I look at that person, I'm going, man, that's ugly. I mean, I don't like that person. Amen. I know you don't either. You know, you look at that guy and that person. And, and the thing that I'm trying to get you to see is that, is that what you're always looking at? Is that person always what you're seeing? Is that the image of who you are? Because sometimes people never come out of that. They try to keep on that image. You know, I never did this, but I do know people who have done this. When they first got saved, they would dress themselves up to make them look presentable or whatever. Okay? I know there's a guy up here that kind of did a little bit of that in this white hair right here. Um, I'm not mentioning names, but Dave Steiner, you know. But, uh, but the point that I'm making is, is that I didn't do that. I was just myself about being Doug Basie. I know it, it was. Amen. <laughs> but, but when you look at that, and so I don't know how many people have known me all my life. A lot of people here know, have known me at least 40 years of my life. But... What I'm asking you is this. Is death reigning in my life? When you look at me, when you look at me, do you still see what came into this building 40 years ago? Nope. When I look at my life, as, as Doug Basie, I'm, I'm telling you, I know what I used to be like. Amen. And I know we don't want to identify with that person because that person, it's, you know, it's like, man, oh, man. But you know what? That person still comes out. <laughs> you know? It really does. You know? And the thing is, is I have to ask, is sin still dictating? Is it still dictating to what I can and cannot have? Because see, if that old image is still dictating to me, that's a stronghold. That's an area of my life that I will never, ever see God's best or God's blessing until that thing's broken. It will never happen. Because I have a will. I have, but some of it isn't will. Some of it's just ignorance. Some of it's just because of old thinking. And it's hard to break some of that old thinking. Some of that old denominational or old way we were brought up. Or this is how we always supposed to do it. And all that. 
and yet that thing hinders us. I'm going to make a statement, and you may not like it, but it also hinders our church if we don't break out of that kind of thinking. It really does. We'll never move to the levels of what God has for us. Amen? In Romans 5.17, it says that, For if by the trespass of one death reigned through the one, much more shall they that receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one. Have you received the abundance of grace? You know, you have to receive it. God will never force it on you. And that abundance of grace is really what he says about you. He says that you're going to have life and have it abundantly. But if you don't believe that, you know what? You're not going to have life, and you're not going to have it abundantly. He says that we're healed by the stripes that were laid upon his son, Jesus. If you don't believe that, you're not going to have that. And that's that old Adam, that old thing, being set there, and it's, he's on the throne. And he's the one dictating to you what you're going to have or have not in your life. Amen? You know? Have you received the gift of righteousness? You know, and I'll have to say, this is hard for people. I know when I first, when God started showing me what he meant by that, I started sharing with people, and I'm telling you, I caught a firestorm. People thought, you, you're nuts. You cannot say that. And I would go away and I'd cower like, man, oh man, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. And a year later, God would just bring it up again and he would show me even more and he'd give me more revelation on it. And he's saying, you know what, Doug? This is the truth. And so I'd share it again. It's called casting your uh, pearls before swine. That's really what I'd done, and I hadn't realized I was doing it. And they would take that, what I was sharing, and they would just demolish it. Because it went against every doctrine of what the church has taught for years. And then I'd, oh, yep, you're right. And then God would show me, and he even gave me more revelation of it. And after that, I said, you know what? This is the truth. I am righteous. I am not a sinner. That Adam part of me is a dead man. And I have received the gift of righteousness. And because of that, I didn't do this. He did this. For, and I mean, that's a choice. And it's a choice I made. And the choice that I made was I receive what Christ has done for me. I receive righteousness. And from this day on, I don't care what anybody says, thinks, or whatever. God says, I am righteous. And so I say what my daddy says. I am righteous. Now, do I act like it, look like it, and all that? All the time? I know I do. No, I know I don't. But that still does not impact what the Word of God has said over me. The Word of God supersedes everything anything what the, anybody else is saying. It supersedes it. it. It trumps it. It stamps the other stuff out. Amen? And if you want to hear more about this, come tonight because Linda and I are going to be sharing a little bit. I got to get, let her go. But this is the line of vein what we're going to be sharing about. And I gave you my 15 minute introduction. So Amen. Uh, in Romans twelve one, where Doug actually <laughs> went to, <laughs> which I thought was kind of funny. Twelve one, and this is out of the message. 
So here's what I want you to do. God helping you, taking your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. God brings you to the, brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. I want to stop there. Just, you know, with what Doug was saying and what we've been talking about and what the Lord's been sharing with us is that identity. And the only place that we're going to know that is in his presence and in and spending time with him. You know, um, since you were a, a little child and, and um, since I teach kindergarten, that's just kind of where I'm at all the time. But, you know, everything was with an image. And there was an original image that God had for us. And he had a, a specific plan for our lives. And he had... You know, when, when you show a picture um, when you were little, you'd look at a dog and somebody would say, dog. So you represented that picture with a dog, a chair with a chair. And so forever that stuck with you. And when that happens, that image comes, when somebody says it, that image comes into your, to your mind. Well, you know, when um, God had a, a, a plan, an original image for us. And for uh, the creation of Adam. And he intended it for us to have authority and to be co-workers with him. And, uh, you know, so with that, he had this plan for us. And and the plan and the things that you see today, the image today, is a distorted um, um, image of us. And what God really intended it for. If you think about back in, in the garden and when he created the garden and it, what a wonderful place it was, you know, it seems like there's so much focus on the, the tree, you know, of the knowledge of good and evil. So much was just focused on that, and it became Adam and Eve's focus then as well. When we stop and think about all the splendor that was there, that they had, could have and eat of anything that they wanted, but yet they chose to focus their attention on the tree. And the enemy came in and settled them to think on that tree. But, you know, see, we've got to realize we don't want that counterfeit that the, the devil has showed us what that image is supposed to be. We want the original image. You know, when you have paintings and the original and what value it is and what spectacular artwork it is, or there's the counterfeit of it. You know, we need to look at what God had for us and realize he still desires that today. And so with the first Adam, that, that became uh, faulty, and so he had to send the second Adam, you know, for us to, to restore that image. And so with doing that, you know, God's just been kind of sharing with me, you know, it's, it's um, we tend to sometimes look so deep, so big and stuff that we tend to forget about the little things. And, um, you know, we get blinded or confused by things sometimes because it just seems overwhelming. And if I had Doug's glasses and I and we could switch glasses or whatever, and if I put them up here, I, I'm not going to be able to read or see what I need to do. But I have my particular glasses, you know, that fit for me so that I could see clearly. We need to put on his and get his image of us. And, and that place is only with him and that time spent with him. Our identity, and even in the church, are identified with things of this earth. We, are, we tie ourselves so much with this earth that we begin looking at the counterfeit instead of the original image. Um, and I just want to read in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 45 through 47. This is out of the New King James. It just talks about the Adam, and, and I want to establish that here. It says, and so it is written, the first Adam became a living being. The last Adam became a living, giving spirit. 
However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, and afterward the spiritual. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. And we need to realize that place with, with God came with, to this earth for us to give us that original picture back and to give us that original image to look to and to focus on our attention and realize he's our example. He's our example to turn to when we don't know or we don't aren't walking or are in those things of confusion sometimes that we need to turn and look through God's eyes and realize who we are. And that image is so important to our everyday walk because that's how we move and we touch other people. And um, so we've got to see through his eyes. And, and so we must know him. We must commune with him or have that intimacy with him. We must listen and then we must obey. And, and we've got to do those things out of love. It's always based out of love. God created the garden out of love. He created us out of love. He sent his son out of love. And, you know, it is such a, a tremendous place to just sit and think about all the little intricate details that he has done and showed us in our lives. And, I'm, you know, this in the message where it talks about walking in our everyday life because that's where he wants to be in your everyday life life. You know, I ask him when I can't find things. God, where are, where's that other sock? I have one. I cannot find the other sock. You know, Lord, you know right where it's at. Direct me to it. And you know, he does. He cares about those things. You know, oh, I can't find this, you know, or Lord, I really, I really wasn't, didn't have everything here. I, I've got to find whatever, help me with that. And he always shows up. But it's those little things. You know, when I think about my dad's life, it was the little things, you know, that he went and that people appreciated so much. That, you know, and I watched and I, and he, ha it was a great example, but he took the phone calls. You know, he went <clears throat> and visited to, to people all the time. You know, he took the time to put into people, and it was out of love. But he could, first couldn't have done that without spending that time with the Father because that's where he pulled that love from. Because growing up, you know, he had, you know, my grandparents are great and everything, and they were, you know, who they were, but they, they had faults, you know. I mean, they had areas where my dad wasn't real close to his father there was just a you know there wasn't that love that was really flowed that where you said I love you all the time or you did those things it was just you know it was tougher back then it was just things that he had to go through he had a sister who had polio and had to help take care of her there was a lot of you know heartache and a lot of things that he had to go through and you can't out of your natural give that so you have to draw from somebody, and he drew from the Father, where that's what our Father wants for us to spend that time to be able to draw and to, and to send it forth. You know, it was the, the little things that I remember growing up that made a difference in my life. And I think if all of us would look and think about things from your past and from people that were very important in your life, and it was the little things. You know, I, I posted a video on Facebook with Doug's parents that love to dance, and it was just a little thing just to watch them because they just, they did it so much, and they, they loved to dance, and they just loved each other, and it came out, and it showed in that. You know, I was thinking about my mom this week, and, and it was the little things about the way she would wake me up in the morning, you know, which she had to call several times because I didn't like to get up. <laughs> It was the little things. It was the standing in the doorway. Yeah, I still can't get over I did this. But anyway, I'd make her stand at the doorway, and we talked for, I don't know, an hour or so at bedtime. Because I didn't like to go to bed, and that was my time to talk and to whatever. And if I had her sit down or would lay down, she'd go to sleep. <laughs> So she'd stand there, and she'd endure all my 
many hours of talks that way. You know, it was those times. There was the time I do remember her laying down in bed with me, and we had, you know, uh, just a great visit and that we had and just that time spent together. It was her smiles. It was the way she called me Linda Maria or, you know, where um, sometimes she would say Linda Marina or whatever, and she'd always, you know, the way she would take my drinks and always uh, take my pop and drink it, you know, because she'd always say that my pops were the best, and so she, it was her way of doing. You know, it's the little things. Do they? I mean, they're a big thing. No, but you know what? My children do the same thing. <laughs> they do the same thing. I don't know, but anyway, um, you know, you just think of those things, and God wants to come into those little areas of your life. He wants to touch those. He wants to be a part of it because He loves you so much. You know, I think back with my, my own children. It's the little things that, you know, just the time of just holding them or the time of, of the wrestling or that we play Lion King in our front living room every evening, you know, and, and Doug would have to be Mufasa and <laughs> Jordan was uh, Simba and Olivia was Nala. And, <laughs> and, you know, it's the little things that just make the difference. So, you know, I had a... a um, now, there was something, I think it was on Facebook again, um, but it was a testimony of a lady who um, went by a homeless man, and the Lord just spoke to him, her and was very specific in telling her to get some vitamins or get something or whatever for him. Well, and she just thought, I really want to get him some fried chicken. You know, I want to get the fried chicken, and maybe he saw it or whatever, but... But he was like, no, I just want you to get this. Well, she wanted to do so much more. She wanted to do this. And God was just like, no, do this. So she obeyed and, and got it, but just kept thinking over here, I want to do this. And as, he, as she went to give, give it to the man and said, you know, did you come in to get warm and everything? I just have something for you and just wanted to bless you with this. Then there was a lady that came right after her that had fried chicken. You know, sometimes God just wants you to do just a little thing. But if we don't spend that time with him and commune with him, then we're not going to hear that voice. And he wants to use us all the time. You know, but we have to train ourselves. We have to train to hear because he's always speaking to us. It's just a matter of we're going to listen. And, and so I just want to encourage you to do that. Make every moment count. Be invested in, in those moments and those little things that God has for us. Um, allow yourself to be used and allow him to show you his love and move out because of love. Look into the world through his image. Look at yourself in his mirror and then move out for in that love. Um, that's the way he sees you. He sees you in that righteousness, and he sees you in his glory, and he wants to use you in, in every area of your life, especially those little things he, he wants to bless you with. Amen. I'm done. All right, let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you for your truths. Thank you, Father, that our image is in you and that, Father, we're going to start looking deeper into your word, Father, to find out who we are. And then we're going to move out in that. In Jesus' name, amen.